Hey all, welcome to Circular Tone. And that was the late, great Wayne Static with Static X. And what can you say about that band, the evil disco that was Static X? Lots of people, actually, they don't consider them new metal. They do consider them to be more of their own thing with a bit of the industrial thrown in. But uh, they came out at the right time, right place. And they were literally like an explosion. I saw them live by mistake and they blew my teats off. It was amazing. I couldn't believe how good they were. And then after that, I basically ran out and got all their stuff. Let's get to the gear. That's why you're here. The valve state. The My nemesis. I, You know, people wax lyrical about solid state Randalls, the solid state Marshalls, and no Chuck used it, and Prong used it, and Static X used it. It's a terrible amp. I, I don't care what anyone says. It's uh, it's tight as buggery, and I guess that's the charm. But once that charm is out the window, you record this thing to digital. Mm -mm -mm. No, it sounds like shit, and it is poorly built. My intro is not going to sound the same, and I believe there's a few reasons why. In the beginning of this of push it, you can hear a whammy pedal go wah on wah on. So I was just doing the you know kind of have a whammy pedal. I was just doing it that way. So uh, obviously, tonally, it's going to be off because when you go through a whammy pedal, it has its own character. And he actually used Gibson and he used a Gibson Les Paul Gold Top. You never see him use uh, regular looking Gibsons live. It's usually uh, the Flying Vs, things like that. But the reason that Wayne went Gibson in the studio is because of Kiss. He was a massive Kiss fan and he actually had dreams one day of actually being the guitarist of Kiss. And so he always used to look at the albums and it would say, uh, Kiss only use Gibson guitars on these albums type of thing. So that stuck with him. And funny enough, so he became a, a Gibson an Epiphone uh, in Dorsey and they treated him like crap. And then he had to, he had, it was crazy. He'd given him so much press because every interview he'd bring up that Kiss and Gibson thing. And then he would say later on that Gibson, nobody at Gibson actually knew who he was, you know, when he'd, ask where's my guitar this that and the other so then he went on to esp went on to uh, uh other brands as well but in the studio he used this bad boy the valve state and he also used a a gibson les paul a gold top and an ns2 pedal just a not just a noise suppressor the thing which i was missing he actually used the matching cabinet with the valve state i think they have uh, Celestian Goldbacks on them, which I believe are rebadged evidence speakers. There's a lot of shenanigans going on, but that is I couldn't get it. Um, Fukuda used the, the the other guitarist used Vintage Thirties and a VHG a Pitbull, but uh, for the main rhythm, most of it was the valve state, and I got that from Eric Wild. I actually emailed him, said, "Do you remember what you used?" He's like, "I kind of do remember what I used." So let's let's get to it. Let's have a look. At the list. Ehrlich was a bit foggy on the mics. He said he used a 57 and a 241. And Fukuda recalls that it was an SM57 and an AKG C414. So I used the C414 and the SM57 because I didn't have the other one. So when it came to Kiyoshi uh, Fukuda, he wasn't just a, these, another guitarist. He was part, a huge part of the synth aspect of it. And he would, when Ehrlich Wilde was recording the drums, he joked that we recorded them to plywood because Fukuda had his own sensors taped to plywood that he put on the drums to uh, trigger it. And then the drummer was a really bloody good drummer, but he would play, he played the whole album twice because they had to put the cymbals in with it. And then most of it are, you know, sampled beats, things like that. So at the time, kind of state of the art stuff that they were doing and the pre Ehrlich Wild, the producer, was actually worried that he could not get as good as the demos because Wayne Static would put everything on a demo and he'd use like Akai uh, samplers and all sorts of stuff and uh, keyboards and obviously the, his guitars. And Ehrlich was like, this demo is so good. I'm not sure if I can get any better. But then he said, with a little smile, he said, but I did get better. <laughs> and he did because that album was like huge. And who would have thought that stinking piece of crap? How did he get that sound out of it? I went with vintage 30s. I tried uh, 75s, but I do believe 
that it was a different speaker because I couldn't get this crazy top end thing and there was a certain scoop to it that I couldn't get with the Vintage 30 because the Vintage 30 is all fucking mids. So I believe that it was, I think the key might have been this different speaker and I would have got closer because I didn't really nail this 100%. I got it in the ballpark, I suppose. But, you know, by my standards, eh, it's, I did okay. But it's still, you know, it's a labor of love because this band were huge for me. Huge for me. They, it's the for me uh, being an old thrashling. It's the nineties. The late nineties was such a shitty time. So, you know, because of fucking Limp Biscuit and all that shit. And so a couple of these shining lights did pop out. People he, say that he was led down the wrong path. You know, Wayne with the drugs and the sex and his wife. She was a porn star and apparently everybody says, oh, he's misled and he's taken down the track and then he got into drugs and it's like, he's a grown man. He is a grown man. You know, personal responsibility. You can't blame this poor woman for all of his ills. Yes, he was with her like 24 hours a day. They were madly in love. And you can't bottle that shit, man. And she, God bless her, she committed suicide, just, I think like two years after he died of an overdose and he wasn't, he didn't have an overdose of, you know, like meth and crack and the rest of it. It was just pres prescription drugs and alcohol. You know, just one of those combinations that wrong place, wrong time, wrong night. And that was the end of, of that. But uh, yeah, rest in peace, both you guys. The, she, get, she got way too much shit. I mean, he's a grown man and who can blame him? Porn stars and driving hot rods and fucking four by fours in the forest and the rest. He was rock and fucking roll. So yeah, so let's, I'm not going to like mope over what could have been, but here's his life. He lived it and uh, he pushed it like the song says. <laughs> so yeah, lots of uh, information here. If you want to see my mic positions and settings and the rest of it, you can go to my Instagram and uh, there's lots of pictures there. And also, thanks to my patrons of Tone, we've got uh, Loki S, we have Brian G, we have Jeremy, we have Mike M, and we have Michael P. So you guys are awesome. Keep these speakers flapping. Major flappage. There's been major flappage recently, and it's not going to stop because it's too much fun. <laughs> but yeah, if you're a, back to the band, if you're a fan of Static X, I highly recommend you watch uh, this. It's, it's not so much a documentary. I think it's like DVD footage uh, extras. And they, it's, they're basically in the studio. And it's so great. You, you can see them in the studio for the first time. They're all having a good time. And uh, I, funnily enough, Wayne Static would often record his lines naked <laughs> when he was singing. See little quirky things that they would do. But uh, And I think the, the meld between Fukada and Campos and the Wayne, that was such a tight machine, you know? And it just had that something, because you have Fukada with his VHT making everything a bit more uh, bold and the rest of it, and you'd have this solid state, uh, tight as hell, but it works with tape. You know, when you're hitting tape with solid state, it, it sounds much better than going straight to digital. You can hear that in Wayne's later stuff, where he was, you know, recording to laptops, things like that. Uh, you can hear it, it's, it gets flat. I don't know what it is. It's just that harmonic distortion that you get with tape. Thanks to Ehrlich. Uh, thanks to Kyoshi. And I really appreciate it. Lots of good times we had when I was watching this band. I mean, they've had their, uh, you know, fair share of bad news in the past. But the legend lives on. That's all we can do is uh, praise their music. They're on tour now which uh, with a, a new front man and it's all in the style of Wayne. Even the front man even has like a mask on that kind of looks like him. It's kind of weird, but cool at the same time. So I wish him good luck on that tour. All right, chaps, you have a good one. What's coming up next? The Cure, early Cure. And that is going to be a good one. Have a good one again. Circle of Tongue.